Hey guys, what's up? Thanks for watching that last video. This will be a continuation of the first video. Uh, so if you haven't watched that first video, go ahead and check it out. It talks more about how to adjust the brush settings. And this, what this video will kind of cover is a second spot you want to take a look at if you are troubleshooting your brushes. For example, one of the comments from the past video was that the grease pencil brush tends to kind of jitter, this like jaggedy line. What I kind of do to change this to make it more smooth is make sure your post processing is off. I don't really like this feature and I'm going to elaborate on it a bit more. The reason I don't like it right now is because I feel like there's too many inputs to kind of adjust your line. And to talk about some of this stuff, from what I know, smoothing is, is going to smooth your line, but simplify is more like it simplifies the geometry of the vector points of your brush. So the higher you have this up, I'm going to show you real quick. Let me change this brush to the one I made. Um, there we go. Let's say we, we turn on post-processing, right? And if we increase the simplify, what it's going to do is if you have like a, a round curve, right? It's going to simplify the vector points and it's going to create a straight line between those vector points so it simplifies the geometry so that in case like for some reason if your computer can't handle that much geometry then it's going to start to stutter and lag and which you don't want so you can kind of use the simplify tool to adjust your line but then it doesn't look illustrative and the whole point of me adjusting these pens is to to make grease pencil more illustrative if you look into edit mode right let's see down but let's see yeah see how this only has five points of geometry five vector points while this more illustrated line here right it has a bunch of geometry to it blender is processing the distance from the vector points and why would i use blender grease pencil over something like photoshop and my answer would be that you would want to use Blender because of its ability to manipulate its vector points. And what I mean by that is that if I go into a feature like sculpt mode, right, I can adjust the line just by pushing it like this. It's kind of like fudging a pinball, like you're just pushing it or you can push your lines around after the fact that you made them. And that's the one benefit over Photoshop. Photoshop is not vector based, so you can't adjust lines like this or the geometry of lines like this in the in the software. In Clip Studio Paint, you can, but my problem with Clip Studio Paint is that if, you, if you're gonna try and use the vector lines for animation, I would say that their, their interface, their graphic user interface for Clip Studio Paint is not that friendly. I tried it and it's, it just kind of feels like it's kind of outdated, but the brushes feel good, so. There's kind of a disconnect on that software on that end. Here on Blender, it's really easy to kind of animate with Grease Pencil because you have your timeline here. It's very simple. Um, you can just add in keyframes for when you're drawing and I'll cover that later. But there's a lot of Blender tutorials out there on how to animate with Grease Pencil. But this video covers is basically the, um, the illustrative nature of the Grease Pencil brush and why I'm kind of progressing with Blender is because I want to work in 3D um, and I, I like the vector functionality of the brush and my um, concern is that it's just not illustrative enough for people who are transitioning from like Photoshop or Clip Studio. This version 2 of the pen I made, if you look at kind of like this face here, um, let's, let's go into it. You can kind of see how much smoother it is compared to the version 1 of my pen. I kind of got rid of the jaggedness by going into the, the advanced features tab up here. And what you can do is you can kind of decrease or increase input samples and adjust active smoothing. So it's kind of like a seesaw effect. You kind of want to like decrease input samples as you increase active smoothing. And what that does is that input samples is how much input it's taking from your pen. So, um, it'll smooth out your line a lot better, but at the same time, it's, it's more sensitive to how you push the, the pen down. So let's say I, I, I decrease this to like something like two, right? It's gonna feel like when you push, it's gonna 
leak out the pen a bit more. But I usually keep it in between 0 to 10. 10 is a, it's, um, it feels like it, it's reactive enough, but you still have to push down. If that's a good kind of number. And active smoothing is to kind of reduce this um, jittering that you get with um, the original version of my pen. So let's say this was at zero, right? <clears throat> See how it starts to, this is the problem that it starts to deal with is that it starts to jitter around sharp curves. And I think the reason behind that is because it's trying to create these vector points when you're moving slowly. And those vector points, let's go into edit mode real quick. It's trying to connect all these random like vector points that you made with your line. And so that's where that jaggedness is coming from. And um, to kind of reduce that, right? You go back into draw mode, you gotta bump up the active smoothing. And I usually, I, I left it at, I found a good number at like 0.5. <clears throat> and see how much smoother that line is? You don't have that jaggedness anymore. And there's no resources out there that kind of um, cover that. So this is a the second video kind of covers the advanced tab. Um, and my experiences with the post-processing post tab and me not kind of like liking, like I don't know what iterations or subdivision step do. I only know what it's kind of, I understand what Simplify does. And, you know, smoothing is just kind of um, straightforward. And then like, I don't really need trim stroke end. So yeah, you can just, Turn on the advanced. For some reason, the advanced tab is simpler than the stroke tab. You know, <laughs> it's kind of weird. We're going to talk about angle and factor. So this is where your brush could not behave how it's supposed to. Like, say, for example, I had um, marker, marker chisel, right? When I first use this default brush, it doesn't behave like a chisel brush. And what a chisel brush is like, you know, like a Sharpie marker with a flat square edge. And so I was like, why is it not behaving like um, a marker chisel brush? And the reasoning is is, is that um, for my end, I had my angle set up weird and my factors set up weird. I'm going to explain what these features are. So angle, let me just reduce it to zero real quick. Oh, so I can make a, so I can draw. Yeah, so I'm going to set the angle to zero real quick and the factor to zero. So what means that say this is your pen, right? This is like zero degrees. And then like if it moves towards here, it's 90 degrees. So what the software is doing is it's saying at zero degrees, give me the maximum width of your pen. And so by changing it to zero, if my pen is perpendicular to the, the tablet, it's going to create the maximum width of the pen. The second feature factor, it says, okay, at zero, here, here, oh yeah, if you just hover about above it, it says it too. Reduce brush thickness by this factor when stroke is perpendicular to angle direction. Kind of want to keep this at zero, but you don't really need to change factor to be honest. Because what that says is that it's a combination of angle, like what I said earlier. If your pen is zero degrees to the tablet, produce the, the maximum width. All you know is you don't really need to touch it. Um, what you do need to touch is uh, the angle. Let's say you are at, you normally draw your pen with an angle at like 16 degrees or something, right here. That means. That means that it's going to produce the maximum width at that angle. But for default settings, it's usually best to keep this at zero because that just makes more sense, like logically in, in my head. Like if I'm keeping it perpendicular to the pen, it should produce the darkest mark, just like how you would mark with a pen on paper. So that's the second part of um, the grease pencil brush settings that 
you know, the basics that you need to understand. Like if your pen is not behaving right, it's usually the brush settings curve. You want to look at the brush settings curve first, like in part one of the video where you can tweak the brush settings curve to adjust the tapering and the width of the brush. And then here in the advanced settings, you adjust input samples and active smooths to adjust how it reacts to curves. And then angle and factor, factor to adjust the responsiveness to the angle of your pen. And with those three things, you can basically adjust any pen. These pens are great. They're just not great on their own without adjusting them. And I'm going to talk about some of the pens that I think are the best. First of all is the ink pen, right? Because the ink pen already has a tapering to it. That's the most common one that I feel like I'm going to use. Um, and you can kind of see in, in these illustrations on the right how... You know, it feels more like ink, you know, and I can draw this face no problem. And then I can go into and use the benefit of Grease Pencil, which is sculpt mode and edit mode to kind of fudge. Yeah, to kind of fudge these lines. So if I'm animating, right, if I'm going keyframe by keyframe, I don't have to be the greatest draftsman, you know, I can just like fudge the pinball around. That's the benefit of vector based lines. I can tweak and tween um, these lines to get them where I want them for the animation. Just a huge benefit. Um, edit mode, you can go back into edit mode and then look, you know, look at the, basically the, um, the vector points and how I can adjust them manually if I really wanted to get that like, that detailed about it. Um, a lot of anime, the reason they do that is because it's easier to animate with a solid line because you don't have to worry, you know, about boil. Um, and maybe they're using a non-vector based software to animate like that. Not too entirely sure, but the benefit of Grease Pencil is that you can kind of play around with the illustrative quality of the line now. So you can use like tapering, but still have that vector quality to it to animate. You know, like we were just adjusting the marker earlier. If you want that square kind of chunky brush that you see in like comics, you can do that. You can have that square, you can have that square in and still have that like that width and thickness to it. Um, kind of reminds me of like French comics, you know, French or uh, American comics, where it kind of has like these big square chiseled Sharpie brushes. Um, pen is just as it's useful because it's just like a solid line thickness, solid equal weight line thickness. So I think this would be beneficial for like if you're storyboarding something, you don't really need to play around with line width that much. You know, you can just like block in characters real quick and then you can not close the lines and then you can kind of go into sculpt or whatever edit mode. You can tweak and tween these really easily. Like I just made this like ginger man starfish character and I can like adjust feet and legs. Like pencil, I think, you know, it's fine. You can kind it's kind of pencil like. And like before, you need to tweak the brush settings curves first. That's where you want to look at first to make it behave how you want it. And then go into the advanced. Don't don't use post processing. Push your eraser to stroke. And you just can quickly delete strokes like this. You don't have to go in and erase it like, um, you know, pixel by pixel. You can just de delete strokes and then just redraw stuff, which is really great. Yeah, so in conclusion, after going into the brush settings, always check your advanced tab next to adjust your input samples, your active smooth, and then make sure your angles start off with zero and then tweak it later if you feel like um, you want the angle of your pen to change. But, but, that's basically it for this demo and to talk about how to improve your pen quality for Grease Pencil. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to comment down below and subscribe for more Grease Pencil tips. And I hope this helps because there's a lot of Grease Pencil tutorials out there that are very complicated and I don't, and they're covering topics that I don't think the basic things you need to know to adjust it on your your end. You're going in like with super 
they're going into super detail about textures and stuff like that where i feel like a lot of users they just want to you know they want one basic pen that works really well and so that's what i'm giving to you here and i hope it helps uh, thanks for watching and yeah subscribe